Hello, this uh, video is to show um, progress and technical results of the Marantz 2238B repair. Now this came to me with a really bad static and crackling sound, mostly on the right speaker. Um, it was very significant, it would make these big cracks and pop sounds that were um, um, very loud. <laughs> it wasn't nice to... Um, to listen to. Um, this came from another repair shop where they said they changed a lot of capacitors. Uh, so I just wanted to document that I do see this one was changed here, this one, and this third one here. I didn't notice any other ones. Actually, I didn't realize that these were changed at first because, um, because they're black, and specifically this one with the um, silver stripe. Uh, they just um, were in that easy to find. Anyway, so I know that these three capacitors were changed, uh, but I didn't see any other ones um, that were marked in the technical um, uh, the invoice from the last repair shop. I noticed that these aren't the right screws here. Uh, because they're not the right screws, this doesn't make a perfect contact here. Sometimes these components have to be grounded, uh, but I don't think that's the case. I think they're they should be diodes and both the connections are there, but sometimes there's a contact on the back of them and um, they have to be mechanically connected, but I think in this case it's it should just be flush against the heat sink to dissipate the heat properly and to, um, to regulate the heat on, um, it should, how, the temperature of this should basically match the temperature of the output transistors. Okay, so next uh, I check the DC offset and the idle current adjustments, which are respectively, this is the right channel and that's the left channel. Um, so they weren't adjusted properly. I was able to get them to the proper values. And then I check the power supply after, um, which you use this adjustment to set it to 35 volts DC. And that feeds into the... Um, into the power amplifier. Um, now that's where I noticed something was weird. That was set to about 20 volts. So I mean, it's uh, almost 50% of the voltage that it was supposed to be. And I think between that and the way that these were regulated, that's what was causing the problem. I, I have a feeling because the voltage was so low and then with the way the idle current was set, um, it was probably causing the transistor to activate and then deactivate. So we would uh, turn on, turn off, and it would. That's probably what was making those big crackling sounds. Um, so I think someone did realize that there was a problem with the power supply, and unfortunately, they only changed these three capacitors. Much more likely, it's. Um, I haven't looked into it yet. I stopped here, but this is probably the two uh, regulating transistors there, and I'm assuming that's most likely the culprit. Uh, there's also a couple of diodes here, and um, might be worth changing while I'm there. Now, they did mention in the previous report that it's not that accessible, and that's absolutely true. These are the uh, two main uh, power capacitors, and I'd probably, well, I would absolutely have to remove them to get there because the components are behind it. Because they're the big, powerful capacitors, I'd have to bleed them out to remove any charge inside them um, to do this safely. So because I have to do a little bit more work to get there, um, although that, you know, a lot of people change capacitors, they think that's the issue, and I'm not going to get into a whole uh, spiel about that, but... Just because it's hard to access, I would change these, you know, while I was there. Um, I, you know, uh, I know that these were changed, but, it, you know, uh, I don't like to um, give the benefit of anyone having done anything properly. So, I mean, I would just change all of them while I was there. Uh, but definitely these two components, and then there's uh, some diodes here. Might as well change at the same time. Um, I could change the um, power resistor there, or maybe some of the other diodes and resistors. Um, again, just because it's hard to access, it's probably worth changing most of the components in this section. Um, 
And just to demonstrate where it's at, I have both the channels hooked up. So as soon as I crank this up, um, I was only able to get it to 30 volts, and it should go well past 35. So uh, I'm almost certain that this is the problem, this power supply section here. When I did crank it all the way up, I was still able to adjust the DC offset and idle currents properly. Uh, although the DC offset was pretty close to zero millivolts, there was still an AC signal overlaying it, uh, or a ripple current. Um, so it wasn't that big, it was about three or five millivolts, but it, you know, in general it shouldn't be there. Um, so when I cranked this up, um, I was, you know, here, I'll just show you, it makes a really loud buzzing on both the left and the right side. So it's even on the left and right side, that's very um, indicative of a power supply problem. If it was an amplifier problem, you know, uh, that buzz would only happen on the channel that's um, uh, problematic. So I'm just going to plug this to show that it's same on both sides. So that's the left channel. Oh, sorry. Um, yeah, that's left. <laughs> and although it's making that loud buzzing sound, it's not making that popping, crackling sound. So I think, I think what happened is instead of changing the components, for whatever reason, you know, they just kind of <laughs> took a few guesses, changed a few random capacitors, and then they probably just kind of adjusted all these until it didn't make that horrible sound. I think if I turn this back down to 20 millivolts, uh, it'll eliminate the buzzing sound, but, you know, through eliminating the buzzing sound, it's gonna, it's gonna cause other issues in the amplifier. So basically my diagnosi diagnosis is to, um, is that there's a problem in the power supply here. Um, definitely change these two transistors, might as well change the diodes on the bottom, and then because, you know, it's hard to access, might as well just change all the capacitors there as well. Um, pretty confident that would solve the problem, but, um, yeah, I'd have to actually do it and then see the results, but based on all my experience and all the measurements that I've taken, um, that's what I would recommend. If that's if this was my amplifier, that's what I would do, and if uh, the problem persisted, I would continue from there, but that would definitely be the first step. Now the crackling and the popping was intermittent, but again, I, I'm pretty certain it was from those um, transistors activating and deactivating because of all the um, improper voltages that uh, were set up on it. So I'll turn this off, get rid of the sound, and um, hopefully this uh, can be restored back to its former glory.